In this video, we're going to learn how to read and analyze the cash flow statement. There are three sections of the cash flow statement. First, we have cash flows from operations, also known as cash flows from operating activities. This is always the first section on the cash flow statement. Next, we have cash flows from investing activities and cash flows from financing activities. Let's take a look at Walmart's cash flow statement. Notice the first section, cash flows from operating activities, and note that we have a total or net cash flow from operating activities. Second section, investing activities, and a net cash flows from investing activities. And finally, our third section, financing activities and the net cash flow from financing activities. Later on, we're going to compare Walmart and Sears Holding. Note that Sears Holdings cash flow statement has the same sections as Walmart. So first we have our cash flows from operating activities and a net cash flows from operating activities. Then we have investing activities and net cash flows from investing activities. And finally, third section, financing activities and a net cash flows from financing activities. Let's take a look at our first section, cash flows from operating activities. Cash flows from operating activities is calculated as cash received from customers minus cash paid for recurring operating expenses. Those recurring operating expenses are things like rent, utilities, salaries, insurance, and any other expenses that companies have to pay year after year. If the bottom line number from the cash flows from operating activities is positive, it means that more cash was collected from customers than was spent on expenses. If the bottom line number is negative, it means that the company spent more cash on expenses than it collected from customers. So we're going to really pay attention to that bottom line number, cash flows from operating activities. So let's take a quick look at Walmart's and Sears Holdings cash flows from operating activities. We can see on the left hand side of the screen that Walmart's cash flows from operating activities is positive. That means that Walmart collected more money from customers than it spent on regular, normal, recurring operating expenses. When we look at Sears Holdings, we can see that Sears Holdings total cash flow from operating activities is negative. That means that Sears spent more money on regular recurring expenses than it collected from customers. Not a good situation to be in. I would definitely prefer Walmart's cash flows over Sears, Sears Holdings operating cash flows. Let's take a closer look at positive cash flows from operations. Think about cash flows from operations as similar to your own personal finances. If you receive so much cash income from your job that you were able to pay all of your recurring expenses, rent, utilities, cell phone, car insurance, all of your other expenses, and then after all of those were paid, have money left over at the end of the month, you could do many wonderful things with that money, such as save for retirement, invest, save for a down payment on a house or a car, or pay down debt, such as credit cards and car loans, for example. You could also waste that money by going out for fancy dinners, getting massages, and going on expensive vacations, for example. So that's why we show the whole cash flow statement, not just cash flows from operations. If a company has positive cash flows from operations, we want to see where it spends its money. 
Now, let's take a closer look at negative cash flows from operating activities. This section is also very similar to your own personal finances. So let's say your income did not cover all of your monthly expenses, you would have to make up that money. That extra money would have to come from somewhere. You might put your gas or groceries on a credit card, which means that you are borrowing some of the money. You might even have to sell some of your jewelry or electronics. So that's why we don't see just the operating cash flow, even if it's negative. If a company's operating cash flows are negative, the money has to come from somewhere, and we want to see where that money comes from. Now, let's take a look at our second section, cash flows from investing activities. So when you think of investing activities, think of the long-term asset section of the balance sheet. Investing activities include investments in property, plant, and equipment, and it also includes investments in other companies. That means buying the stock or securities of another company. Now let's take a look first at negative cash flows from investing activities. Unlike operating activities, you want to see a negative cash flow from investing activities. A negative cash flow means that the company is buying more property, plant, or equipment or making new investments in other companies. If you see a positive operating cash flow in operating activities along with a negative cash flow from investing activities, you can think that the company is making so much money from operations that they are able to buy new assets and invest in its future. Now let's take a look at positive cash flows from investing. Positive cash flow from investments means that the company is selling off some of its property, plant, or equipment, or selling some of its investments in other companies. There may be a really good reason for the company to divest of its assets, but if you look at this along with a negative operating cash flow, it could mean that the company is selling its assets to finance its operations. That would be similar to you selling your diamond ring to pay your rent. There are two things wrong with that. First, you wouldn't get top dollar for your ring if you had to sell it quickly. And second, what would you do next month when your rent continues and you have no more diamond ring? Now the next section we're going to look at is cash flows from financing activities. When you think of financing activities, I want you to think of the right side of the balance sheet. Financing activities include changes in long-term debt and changes in stockholders' equity. Changes in equity include the company issuing new stock, purchasing treasury stock, and paying dividends. Let's take a look at negative cash flows from financing activities. A negative cash flow from financing activities is highly desirable, especially coupled with a positive operating cash flow. A negative cash flow from financing activities means that the company is either paying back principal on long-term debt, purchasing treasury stock, or paying dividends. When a company purchases treasury stock, they buy back shares of their own company. This is a good thing because if there are less shares outstanding, then each share is going to be worth more money. Now let's take a look at positive cash flows from financing. If you see a positive cash flow from financing activities, it means that the company is either borrowing more money long term or issuing new shares of stock. Again, there may be good business purpose for those activities. But if the company is doing those things just because they have a negative operating cash flow, they will run out of money eventually. You cannot keep borrowing, borrowing, borrowing without paying back, and nobody will buy your shares of stock unless you have good net income and good operating cash flows. Now, let's take a look at positive cash flows from financing activities. As a company borrows more money long term, 
its obligations to repay principal and interest also increase, so operating cash flow is hurt even more. So if you see a company with negative operating cash flows and positive cash flows from financing, that company could be getting themselves into a bad situation in the future. Now, as for issuing stock, if a company increases the number of common shares without increasing their net income, increasing the wealth, and increasing the size of the company, the value of each share is going to decrease. So issuing new stock to fund operations is a very bad thing. Now, on the opposite side, if a company purchases treasury stock, it's going to decrease the number of shares it has at outstanding. So as a result, each share of stock is going to be worth more money. Now, now let's put everything together. The ideal cash flow situation would be for the company to have positive operating cash flows along with negative operating and financing cash flows. That would mean that the company is making so much money from operations that it is able to make new investments in property, plant and equipment, or other companies, as well as pay down long-term debt, pay dividends, or purchasing treasury stock. That would be a very good, solid company and I would like to invest money in that company or possibly even loan that money company. The worst possible cash flow situation to be in would be for a company to have a negative cash flow from operations along with positive investing and financing cash flows. That would mean that the company is selling its assets, borrowing money, or issuing new stock to finance its operations. And as we talked about that before, the company cannot continue to do that period after period. So let's take one final look at the cash flows of Walmart and Sears Holdings and compare and contrast them. So when we take a look at Walmart's cash flow statements, we can see that Walmart has positive cash flows from operations for each of the last three years. And I want you to note over here that all numbers are in thousands. So last year, Walmart had over $27 billion in cash left over after it paid all of its operating expenses. So what did Walmart do with that money? Well, first of all, we can see over here in the investing section that they made lots of capital expenditures. They bought lots of new land, buildings, and equipment, which is a wonderful thing. Walmart doesn't buy other companies, so we don't see investments in other companies, and we see small, positive other cash flows from operating activities. So we can see that Walmart's net cash flows from operating activities is negative, which means that Walmart is investing in its future. Now, let's take a look at the financing section. Walmart has paid dividends each of the last three years. We see that it has purchased treasury stock because if it issued new stock, that would be a positive number. So a negative number means that it is purchasing treasury, treasury stock. We can see from the net borrowings that Walmart did borrow a little money three years ago, but for the last two years, it's been paying back its loans, and we have some other small negative other cash flows from financing activities. So we can see down below that Walmart, for each of the last three years, has negative cash flows from financing activities. So what that means is Walmart made so much money from its operations that it was able to invest each year in capital expenditures, pay dividends each of the three years, buy treasury stock, and pay back loans for the past two years. Walmart is a stellar company with a very good cash flow statement. Based on that, I would like to buy Walmart stock or even loan money to Walmart. Now, let's contrast that 
to Sears Holdings cash flow statement. So we can see from Sears Holdings that for each of the past three years, Sears Holdings had negative cash flows from operating activities. And for Sears Holdings, we can see that all of those numbers are also in the thousands. So last year, Sears, Sears Holdings spent over two billion more dollars in expenses than it took in from its customers. Not a good situation to be in. Well, looking at the investing activities, we have negative in capital expenditures, so they were able to invest each year, but those numbers are small based on the total cash flows. But we see here other positive, large positive other cash flows from investing activities. I would like to go into the notes to the financial statements to see what those are, but each one of the years they're di divesting significant assets. So we can see each one of the three years, Sears Holdings had positive cash flows from investing activities, which means that it's been selling off or divesting all of its investments. Now let's take a look at financing activities. Sears Holdings was able to pay dividends three years ago, but none since then. They have not issued new stock nor have they paid back any treasury stock. They borrowed significant money three years ago and it looks like they're kind of paying it back slowly and they have some other small positive cash flows from financing activities. So we can see here that for the past two years Sears Holdings had positive cash flows from financing activities meaning that it was borrowing more money than it was paying back. Last year it had the negative because it looks like it had to pay back some of that money. So based on this cash flow statement, I don't think Sears Holdings is doing very well at all. I would be very unwilling to buy their stock or loan them money.